Hi guys, today we are going to do a lecture on uh, the reproductive system. So I actually have two slideshows and I um, PowerPoints and I combine them into one. Um, so it's a little long, it's 40 slides, but they are two PowerPoints combined into one. So um, this is recorded so you can stop at any time and take a break and then come back to it. So let's go ahead and get started. This is on the reproductive system. It goes with your medical terminology workbook. Um, and um, the uh, reproductive uh, system PowerPoint that is also in uh, Schoology, the reproductive unit. So the reproductive system is responsible for um, the act of producing offspring. So most, both male and female organs are needed um, in most species, I will say that. Theriogenology, so if you're using your medical ter terminology, theriogenology means animal reproduction. The reproduction organs are called um, the genitals. The male reproductive system is responsible for the production and delivery of sperm to the egg to create life. The structures of the male reproductive system are the scrotum, which protects uh, the testes, the epididymis, which stores the sperm, so the testes produce the sperm, the epididymis stores the sperm where it matures and waits to be um, put into the female. The vas deferens are part of that delivery system to get it into the female. Um, the accessory sex glands produce um, some fluids for um, uh, to make it easier for motility for the sperm to get to the female and um, produce nourishment because everything has to eat including sperm. Um, and then the urethra and the penis. The scrotum, again, um, is the, or the scrotal sac is the external pouch that encloses um, and supports the testes. It's there to protect the testicles. Um, you can see uh, the testes um, on the, the screen there. The area between the scrotum and the anus in males is called the perineum. Uh, sometimes we have to make an incision there if they have a blocked urethra. So going back to um, the urinary system, the system we just went through, um, if they have stones in their urethra, it usually happens at that wicked curve and um, we can make an incision there and use a tool to get some of the stones out. If it continues to happen, we just make um, an incision between the anus and um, the scrotum area in male horses and then they pee like a girl. So just a little tidbit going back to the urinary system um, as we move forward in the reproductive system. The testes um, or testicles are the male sex glands. Uh, they are the major organ that you have to have. Um, so they produce spermatozoa, so they produce sperm. Um, the combining form, orchi, orchid, um, so those are terms you guys have learned in your terminology, medical terminology. Uh, testes is the singular for testes. Um, testes make sperm, spermatozoa and then they go to the epididymis. Um, they go from the spermatoz from the testes to the epididymis where they mature. All right, the epididymis is the tube, the upper part of the testes that, uh, sec uh, that secretes the part of the semen, stores the semen before ejaculation and provides a pathageway um, for sperm. The ductus deferens or vas deferens, um, they, uh, it is the tube, it's a kind of windy tube um, that connects uh, the epididymis and it carries sperm um, to the pelvic region towards the urethra as it goes to exit out of the male's body. 
The accessory sex glands um, include the seminal vesicles, the prostate gland, and the bulbo, bulbo urethral gland. Uh, the seminal vesicles, they se secrete a thick substance that nourishes the sperm. Sperm have to eat, especially in elephants. They have a long way to go. Um, so they need to have that nourishment to, so they can get to that egg um, of the female. The prostate gland secretes a thick fluid that aids in the motility of sperm, so to help them get to where they need to go. And then the bulbo urethral gland secretes a thick mucus that acts as a lubricant for the sperm to help them get to that egg where they need to go um, so they can fertilize that egg and hopefully produce an offspring. Um, not all species have all of these glands, so the next slide shows you that. So dogs have a prostate gland and they don't have the other two. The prostate gland does sit around the urethra. So um, if older dogs have prostate issues, if they haven't been uh, neutered, um, a lot of times they may have prostate issues and that prostate will swell up and it sits right around the urethra. So if it swells up, it kind of squishes the urethra and then they have trouble urinating. So um, that's another reason it's important to spay and neuter, spay and neuter, spay and neuter um, to help those um, animals and prevent um, problems with the prostate as they grow older. So cats, same as dogs, just a prostate, not the other two. Oh, nope. Cats have uh, the prostate and the bulbo urethral, sorry. Um, pigs have all three, ruminants have all three, and horses have all three. So um, I think they need more nourishment. They have to go a further distance. They need more help with the motility um, so that the sperm can really get to, to get to where it needs to go in those uh, bigger animals. So here's just a visual picture of um, those accessory sex glands and where they are located in the cat, dog, pig, ox, aka bull, um, or horse. Um, the urethra is the tube passage uh, through the penis to the outside of the body. It, re it serves uh, the reproductive system, but also the urinary system. So it does have two uh, two jobs, and um, potentially if you were looking at a urine of an intact male animal, potentially there could be sperm in that urine. It would not be alive because sperm cannot live in urine, but um, if you were looking at the urine of an intact male animal, potentially it could have um, some sperm floating around in it that you might see under the microscope because it is, the urethra is a passageway for both um, urine and uh, semen. Uh, the penis is the male sex organ that carries the reproductive and urinary products out of the body. And you can see examples of those. Um, the male uh, pig has um, a corkscrew type penis. Uh, this picture doesn't show it very well, but it does have a corkscrew type uh, appearance to it. Um, so when we're doing artificial insemination, just a side note, um, they did have to um, make the insemination rod to have a corkscrew end. They weren't having success with artificial insemination in um, female sows, female pigs, um, until they really um, mod uh, modified the, the insemination rod to um, really have that corkscrew end like uh, the male or boar pig's penis has. All right, um, vesicular gland, seminal vesicles, um, paired accessory glands that secrete fluid uh, that nourishes this, the sperm and provides protection um, in transport transportation medium for the sperm upon ejaculation. The pro prostate gland again secretes thick um, milky fluid that mixes the seminal fluid to provide nourishment and substance for the sperm um, because they do have to go so far you know they do need to eat and have that energy to get to that egg and then bulbo urethral gland 
uh, secretes fluid that cleanses and neutralizes the urine residue that kills um, sperm in the urethra. So um, it kind of um, protects the sperm as it goes through the urethra in case there's any urine left in there because urine will kill the sperm. Here's an example of a cow um, or a bull, sorry, a bull. Um, male reproductive parts. Um, this is something you will see again maybe on a test and some questions. Um, you can see on N how it has this little zigzag thing. So um, as the male goes to um, reproduce with the female, um, this actually extends out here of the scrotum. The penis comes out. So then um, while he's mounting the female cow can um, then go ahead and enter the, the female. So um, testes and uh, related structures. So you have the testes, they're a paired organ. Um, um, they're ovoid, so oval shaped organs that produce sperm cells and testosterone is the hormone. So testosterone is the male sex hormone that is responsible for the development of the secondary male characteristics. Um, so that would be like the muscles, um, uh, the, the sex drive and stuff like that and the sexual behavior known as libido. Um, Spermatic cord is a protective fibrous sheath consisting of smooth muscle, blood vessels, and nerves. You will see these things um, when you watch the castration video because those are the things that get cut to free the testicle to actually castrate um, the horse that, cast that you're watching. All right, the cremaster muscle is the primary muscle that um, supports the testes. Um, it um, it relaxes and let the, lets the testes come down when, when it's hot. Um, when the animal's body is hot, it will bring the testes down so they're cooler. Um, when it's cold outside, the cremaster muscle will cre um, contract and bring the testes up closer to the animal's body to keep um, the, the sperm and the testes warm. So sperm cannot live inside an animal's body. It's just too hot in most species. Um, dolphins, I think, are different. Um, there's another animal as well um, that has internal oh, poultry. Chickens have internal um, testes. Um, but most of our animals have external um, testes because the, the body's just too hot um, and the sperm would die. All right, the scrotum, that sac um, outside the body that protects um, and supports the testes. Epididymis again, um, that coiled tube that connects um, to each testes is responsible for maturation, so maturing the sperm, storing it, and transporting um, the sperm cells to the ductus deferens or the vas deferens. Um, it's part of the spermatic cord that is the passageway for the sperm um, from the epididymis to the urethra through the penis and then out hopefully into the female animal so they can produce an offspring. So here is just um, a picture of those things. The urethra, the passageway for both uh, semen and urine that extends from the ampule, ampullae um, and bladder to the end of the penis. All right, moving on to females then. The female reproductive system is responsible for the creation and the support of new life. Uh, the structures of the female reproductive system include the ovaries, the uterine tubes, the uterus, the cervix, the vagina, the vulva, and then the mammary glands to support the offspring. All right, so you have the ovaries are the small pair of organs located in the caudal abdomen. Um, so they're not too far from where the kidneys were. If you remember that dissection, uh, they're a bit caudal um, to those kidneys on each side. Um, the ovaries produce estrogen and progesterone and an ova, which is the egg. 
So estrogen and progesterone are the hormones they produce, and then they also produce the ova, which is the egg. U4 or over, ovary um, are the combining forms, and you should remember those from medical terminology. Um, ovaries, again, the paired organ that produces the egg. Um, it produces the hormones estrogen and progesterone. Um, progesterone, you need that to maintain the pregnancy. You have the oviducts. They're also called the fallopian tubes. The paired tubes that transport the egg from the ovaries to the uterus, and it serves as a site where sperm and the ova meet and fertilization occurs. So that happens in the oviducts or the fallopian tubes, and then it travels down to the uterus where it then finds a nice cozy place uh, to hang out for the rest of the um, gestation period. The infidibulum are two funnel-like openings of the oviducts um, that pick up the eggs at ovulation and directs them down to the body of the oviduct. So it's kind of like a, a glove or a mitt um, that's by the ovaries and it catches those, those eggs and heads them down to the oviducts where hopefully there is some sperm there um, and then the it can become, the egg can become fertilized and then head down to the uterus. So uterine tubes are the paired tubes that extend from the cranial portion to, um, of the uterus to the um, ovary. Um, it's not attached to the ovary. Again, it's just, it has that glove and it kind of catches, um, catches that egg from the ovary. Uterine tubes carry the ova or the egg from the ovary to the uterus and it also transports sperm. All right, so here are um, the differences in our species. So you have the mare, which is a horse, you have the cow, um, you have the sow, which is the pig, and then you have the bitch, which is um, the dog. The uterus is the thick-walled hollow organ with muscular walls and a mucous membrane lining. Uh, hister, uternus, um, if you remember the terminology, is um, a combining form meter um, or ureter. Uh, uterus a major reproductive organ that consists of the uterine body and the two uterine horns. The embryo attaches to the uterine body or the uterine horn depending on the species. Uh, the uterus varies in shape between livestock species from long uterine horns of the sow to a relatively short uterine horn of the mare. Functions of the uterus include the passageway for sperm during copulation, um, incubation and nourishment of the embryo during pregnancy or the ge gestation period, and expulsion of the fetus during parturition or the birthing process by contractions. All right, so the cervix um, is the caudal uh, continuation of the uterus and the cranial continuation of the vagina. So it's kind of that door there um, that closes down when the animal is pregnant to protect uh, the fetus, the growing fetus in that uterus. So the cervix is very important. It prevents any foreign sub substances from entering the uterus um, as the, the female is trying to um, produce that, that fetus. Uh, the vagina is the muscular lined, uh, muscular tube lined with mucosa that extends from the cervix to the outside of the body. Uh, the, vag the vagina accepts the penis during copulation. Um, so that is where um, the, the penis will go through the vulva, which is the outside portion that we see into the vagina and then stop somewhere around there to release the sperm. Um, when we are doing AI, artificial insemination, we take um, the tube through the cervix and we can even guide it to one side of the horn or the other, depending on which side um, 
the ovary is ovulating. So when we're doing artificial insemination, we can we can get things further along um, than just naturally breeding breeding. So we can take it through that cervix, the tube, and then if it's on the right side or the left side, um, we can aim uh, the semen that direction and we, we push the semen um, from the, the syringe through the tube um, into that uterine horn where um, the mare or cow or, or bitch or um, sow is ovulating. The vulva then is the external opening of the urogenital tract um, that leads into the vagina. The perineum is the region between the vaginal orifice or opening and the anus of the female. The vulva contains um, the vaginal orifice, the vestibule, the glands, the clitoris, the hymen, and the urethral orifice or opening. Here is the picture of um, a cow, the cow. You will see this again on your test um, and in other questions that you will be answering. So um, make sure you kind of look at this and, and make sure you know the pieces and parts here of the female reproductive system. All right, moving on to the mammary glands. The mammary glands are the milk producing glands in the female. The number of mammary glands varies um, with the species. So litter bearing species have mammillae, um, large animals have udders with teats. So please make sure you're using the proper terminology when you're talking to people about um, which animal you have. So mammillae um, when you're talking small animals and then udders and teats when you're talking large animals. Uh, mammary glands are composed of connective tissue arranged into lobes, kind of like the lung lobes, um, uh, lobules, and alveoli. So those are those are things similar to the lungs, but these um, produce milk. Mammo or mast is the combining form for the mammary glands. All right, so the placenta is the female organ of the animal of mammals that develops during pregnancy and joins the mother to the offspring for exchange of nourishment, oxygen, and um, waste products. So the placenta plays a very important role. Um, the placenta is often referred to as the afterbirth. So after um, the female is done having her kids or I'm talking goats now, um, or her foal, or her cow, or her calf, then um, they, they pass the afterbirth. And that is the placenta, is what they're passing.